Hi, I'm Jonathan Balcom. I'm an ethologist. I'm an author of books such as Pleasurable Kingdom and What a Fish Knows. I'm also an associate editor with the online journal Animal Sentience, and I teach a course in Animal Sentience for the Veritas Graduate Institute. My word today, as you may have guessed by now, is sentience, the capacity to feel, to have experiences defined by the new Oxford American Dictionary as simply able to feel things. Its English usage dates to the early 17th century, and it comes from the Latin word of the very same spelling, sentient, and meaning feeling. So it's a very basic concept, and yet the word sentience has rather languished in obscurity in, in usage in English. Uh, it's beginning to emerge, but uh, it still remains a fairly kind of academic term. It really deserves uh, common usage and universal awareness by people. Uh, sentience is almost universally agreed to require some level of consciousness. If you have no conscious awareness, how can you be able to have any experience of, of feelings? So consciousness is very closely linked to sentience. The most often cited quotation relating to sentience is, comes from the 17th century British philosopher Jeremy Bentham, who in a discussion of our moral duties to animals famously asked or said, the question is not, can they reason or can they talk, but can they suffer? Suffering being the key element here, which is very closely tied to sentience. But it's important that um, in our thinking about sentience, we include the spectrum of emotional and physical experiences that a, a sentient being can have. So it's not just about pain and suffering, it's also about pleasure. And uh, the most, probably the most successful and dominant moral philosophy of, of our age, utilitarianism, very much includes pleasure in the whole moral calculus of how we should behave towards others who are sentient. It's not just about minimizing pain and suffering, but it's also about maximizing pleasures. Just wanted to say a few words about this journal I mentioned earlier, Animal Sentience. I think it's indicative of the rise of sentience that we now have a, a journal, an academic journal, dedicated to the subject of animal sentience. There's never really been much discussion, or rather I should say much question about sentience in humans, but uh, when it comes to other non-human animals, the challenge of the privacy of experience that we cannot share the experiences of another being, including another human, has uh, worked against animals, unfortunately, not their fault, but um, it's it's patently obvious to those who are empathic that animals are sentient, but it's easy to, um, scientists and philosophers have made arguments, beginning with René Descartes, that uh, animals are not sentient, and that's been a, a thorn in the side of animal rights advocates for a long time. Uh, that's changing now as the evidence continues to, to mount that animals are clearly sentient. But anyway, this journal, Animal Sentience, it's an interdisciplinary open access journal, so it's a, anyone with an internet connection can read the contents of that journal. It's a very active journal, started in 2016, so far has published 22 articles and 179 commentaries and responses. So it's a very good place to for people to air their views about these issues. Some of the subjects that have been so far covered include fish pain, subjective experiences in insects, animal grief, animal suicide, and jealousy in dogs. So really, in, in my view, sentience forms the bedrock of ethics. It's at the foundation of our sense of morals. And as for when it comes to moral questions about how we should treat animals, uh, sentience, sentience is a central concept. 